بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد on this journey in this world we need to see where the qibla of our heart which direction it is facing to what activities do I get pleasure is it din or dunya what's what's my passion is it Allah in his Rasul is it something else what do I love for what's my ambition and motivation in life what inspires me all the time each person has a driving force in them is it Deen is it Akhirat is it Allah the promises of Allah the promises of his Rasul the promises of dunya the virtues of dunya the pleasures of dunya the enjoyment of dunya a lion tamer puts his life at risk a racing driver can die it could be his last race what's the end game what's the objective i need to check we all need to introspect that in this game of life where will my life end so different people have different indulgences, different enjoyment, different pleasure. The Ahlullah and the friends of Allah, what is their enjoyment? What are they seeing that I cannot see? Have I set a standard for my Akhirah? So different people have different standards but it, the standard is based on what your, your end game, your final destination is. You see, husband on the second day of marriage goes to the beautician who did his wife's bridal makeup and he gave her a beautifully packed latest iPhone plus in the box. She was shocked and she was amazed so she opened the box with great pleasure and ecstasy but was depressed to find a Nokia 1100. She was depressed to find a Nokia 1100. So he smiled and he said same feeling, same feeling. So it should not be that our dunya is packaged like this but our ruh, our internal, externally we have strove but internally there is a degeneration spiritually. Abdullah ibn Wahab rahimahullah you say كل ملذوذ إنما له لذة واحدة Every pleasure, every indulgence, every enjoyment has only one climax إلا العبادة فلها ثلاث لذائذ but worship, communion with Allah has three pleasures. إِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهَا When you engage in that amal, you cannot describe the pleasure. وَإِذَا تَذَكَّرْتَهَا And when you remember that I got a chance, I can do this amal, I need to read Qur'an. Just the fact that you know you got time, you got an opportunity to make tilawat of Qur'an, to engage in salah, you get the enjoyment before the amal also. وَإِذَا and when you are given the reward, then you'll get another enjoyment. Forget the reward of dunya when the people will see what they get in akhirat. Then their hearts would have burst in this world if they knew the reward. So what is our recreation? Whereas those people that have found Allah will not be breach this trust in this aman wa Allah. إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة. Allah has procured. The transaction is done. Our life, our wealth has been bought by Allah. The transaction is done. If I found Allah, I will stick to the agreement. That's why Yahya ibn Ma'az rahimahullah say, Man khan Allah fi siri, hatak Allahu sitrahu fi al-alaniya. Whoever breaches, violates the trust of Allah, whoever betrays Allah in secrecy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unveils the parda, the veil, the screen in public. Allah uncovers 
Allah exposes and reveals His true colors in public. So this internal Islam, this internal reformation, we need to be examining ourselves. We are in the exam room of Allah. And in this exam room, we'll go through different conditions. These tests we are seeing in dunya are small tests. Punishments are also small. Adabil adna, small, minute, insignificant. The real test starts when our eyes close. That's why some sulaha pious people you say, Hayatul insan bain arbain. That a person passes life through four conditions, through four circumstances. Either he is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَعَلَيْهِ بِالْإِسْتِمْرَارِ So continue that obedience. وَإِمَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي مَعَسِيَةٍ Or a person is disobeying Allah. فَعَلَيْهِ بِالْإِسْتِغْفَارِ Then he should make tawbah and repent. وَإِمَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي نَعْمَةٍ وَإِلَّا يَشَّعُرِ His bounties over you. فَعَلَيْهِ بِالشُّكْرِ then be grateful for all the bounties. وَإِمَّا أَيْ يَكُونَ فِي إِبْتِلَاءٍ Or Allah's trials and tests have overwhelmed you. فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّبْرِ So be patient. So بِالْإِسْتِمْرَارِ أو بِالْإِسْتِغْفَارِ أو بِالشُّكْرِ أو بِالصَّبْرِ So when would somebody obey a person, a being, when the greatness of that person is in your heart? You have the greatness of your parents, you value them. You know the amount of sacrifice they had given for you. You don't need to wait for their command. You will do everything possible even before they ask you to make them happy and to show that you are a grateful child. Now if we do not have the azmat and the greatness of Allah, and we are not grateful for the bounties he has showered on us, then a person forget doing more than we're supposed to do. Clear-cut commandments will be contravened. As Hassan Basri Allah used to say, اعلم أنك لن تحب الله حتى تحب طاعته You cannot love Allah until you love the commands of Allah, until you don't love obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot love Allah. So the command is beloved because the one commanding is beloved. And that person gets the ecstasy in this world, becomes a Jannah. So ulama used to say in the past, إِنَّ الْفَرْحَةَ الْعُذْمَ وَالَّتِي لَا تَعْدِلُهَا فَرْحَةٌ that the greatest, the climax of happiness and elation, no comparison, no comparison, no parable. هي التي تكون عندما تضع كتابك بيمينك. It will be when you will be given your book of deeds in your right hand, and when you receive your books, you will say, وتقول للعالم بأسر. You will tell everybody in the world. هَاءُ مُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَ إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَ Look, 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 watch, see, here's my book. When a, when a child gets seven, eight A's and the report comes, how does he run? How does he rush? How does he forward? How does he send that message globally? I knew, I told everybody, you know I told you I get eight A's, man, here's it. Look, look, so. On the day of Qiyamah, when he will receive his book of deeds in his right hand, are you sure? In a riwayat, يُدْنِ اللَّهُ الْعَبْدِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah will bring a servant close to him on the day of Qiyamah. فَيُقَرِّرُهُ بِذُنُوبِهِ كُلِّهَا Allah will tell him every guna. Allah will remind him. Allah will make him confess to every sin that he committed. حَتَّى إِذَا رَاءَ أَنَّهُ قَدْ هَلَكَ he will decide and say, I'm gone, I'm finished. قال الله, Allah will tell him, إني ستبتها عليك في الدنيا. 
I covered it in dunya wa ana aghfiruha lak al yawm. Today I'll also forgive you. I'll cover it up. Thumma yu'ta kitab hasanatihi bi yaminihi. Then he will be given his book of deeds in his right hands. So it's all about finding Allah while we have this time, this opportunity, these special moments, these special days, these special nights. For a believer, every day is special, every night is special, every minute is special, every second is special because he is communion. What is Allah? So we have to recognize this Allah. A person who has this ambition will go to the ulama and find the key to the house of Allah, find the key to Jannah, Jannatul Firdaus. Ibn Umar used to say, لَأَنْ أَدْمَى دَمْعَةً مِنْ خَشَّةِ اللَّهِ That I tear for the fear of Allah is more beloved to me مِنْ أَنْ أَتَسَدَّقَ بِأَلْفِ دِينَارِ Then giving a thousand gold coins in sadaqah in charity. So knowing what is beloved to Allah, what does my Allah want, what does my Allah love, what is the key to the heart, what is the key to get in this heart to find in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So taqwa, making tilawat of Qur'an, we need to get this taqwa and make a niyat number 17, such a taqwa that Allah will endow me with the faculty of differentiation. Allah will give a person the potential to distinguish between right and wrong. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu O people of Iman, fear Allah. What will happen? Yaj'al lakum furqanan wa yukaffir ankum sayyatikum wa yaghfir lakum That Allah will grant you a criteria, a benchmark of differentiation where a person can have inherently the differentiating factor between good and bad, between truth and falsehood. This is the decision. Taqwa will guide a person. When, when COVID happens, I'll be faced with challenges. What, challenges. what would my Nabi do at this time? How would he react? How would he identify the plotting of Batil? Which actions do I need to do to engage to draw the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What amal, what command of Allah is suspended me on, on me at this point in time so I can dispel any adab that is forthcoming? How do I utilize my time? What should I engage in? How should I make tarbiyah of my children? How do, do I secure dunya? How do I secure akhirah? This taqwa will instill that hindsight and that foresight that what needs to be done at, the, at that moment. They say there was a, a, a righteous, pious person and somebody questioned me and said, what was that pivotal moment in your life? That moment of change, the, the, the turning point, the defining moment in your life which caused this transition, the milestone. So his reply was, when I was young, there wasn't a guna, there wasn't a sin that I would perpetrate. Every guna was available to me. Every site, every location, every girl, every chapter, every form of masya I conquered. And one day I was traveling, I saw a young, beautiful damsel. I had never seen anybody like her. Previously they dared me and they told me you won't get her. I got it right. I was a master at my field. I was an expert at what I could do. I could check anybody up. I could get anybody around my finger. But her beauty was unique. So I approached her. I tried my luck. I failed. I left her with these words. If ever you need any funds and you are desperate, come see me. I'll sort your needs out. So that's the last straw. If we cannot get something, 
we buy our way out of it we buy people we start controlling people with wealth it's so one day she approached me she was very nervous and i realized that i i won the game i got it right and now i'm going to satisfy my desires fulfill my lust and it's going to cost me but i'll i'll get it done so when she she approached me reluctantly with modesty and her yeah she stood before me and she looked terrified so i i noticed this this shake and tremor in her so feeling sorry for her i said do not fear for i will not harm you but her fright and a fear increased and a situation worsened and she trembled like a palm tree a leaves of a tree how it shakes she was shivering and shaking so i said what what's the story what's happening tell me come clean so she said by allah oh my brother my brother never before have i ever embarked on something like this i remain chaste my entire life i never offered anybody my body dire need has has driven me has forced me to this and my husband had passed away i have three daughters who have not eaten a single morsel of food for three days now three days have transpired it was out of concern for them and their safety and my need to save their lives that i am at this abyss and this low point in my life so he said for the first time in my life i've been through many situations but i was as hard as a rock i felt pity for her and her story moved me and i no longer now entertained the thought of taking advantage of her i asked her for where she was loving i took her details and told her that she can go and not fear and i went home whatever money i had i gathered it the clothing and food which i could purchase i purchased from the market and i went to her home and left it without any recompense when i returned home i told my mother what had happened so my mother was shocked and surprised when you know somebody you know somebody she was shocked and surprised that even a mother could be shocked at her own son so she she seen the opportunity and she said i know you have a book a diary the black book which you record all your gunas and your sins and your maasiat so she said my son you are a man who has never performed a good deed in your life for the one that you committed today this is the only good deed you committed that black book that black diary of darkness go in that book and write to your khaliq write to your allah this deed write to your allah this deed for i see no salvation for you a mother telling her son what a scene So he said immediately I went I opened the book I searched the pages all the pages were blank except for the first page which was written in a single line innal hasanat yudhibna sayyiat verily good deeds remove evil deeds they erase they obliterate evil deeds said at that moment i lifted my hands to my allah and i said by your jalal by your majesty allah wallahi bi izzatika wa bi jalalika la asika ba'd al yawm abadan i will never ever disobey you ya allah we need to see when's our change in point when's my milestone do i have to wait for something to happen or will death come the amal for today is to engage in charity 
inna Allah idha stawda'a shay'an hafidhahu when Allah is given something for safekeeping he safeguards it Umar ibn al-Aziz used to say as salatu salat takes you to half the journey and fasting takes you to Bab al-Malik to the door of the master and sadaqa tudkhiluka alayhi will enter you to the master Yahya ibn al-Aziz used to say ma a'arifu habbatan tazinu jibal al-dunya I do not know any grain weighing the weight more weighty then even the mountains is the grain of sadaqa may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin